title this, Transform Your Life with What You Have. Transform Your Life with What You Have. We take our scriptures from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7, as our pastor started that on, on Sunday, and then it was such a wonderful time, flourishing financially in impossible times. It was a message in season for everyone, whether you live in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, the situations are similar, just that they are more... <laughs> Amen. Second Kings chapter 4, I read from verse 1, from the New Living Translation. So one day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord, but now a creditor has come, threatening to take my sons, my two sons as slaves. Verse 2 says, What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me what do you have in your house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. Verse 3, and Elisha said, Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour the olive oil from the flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after, the, one after another. Verse 6 says, Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. They aren't anymore, he told her, and then the olive oil stopped flowing. And verse 7 says, when she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. Amen. All right, there are some critical things I would like us to quickly bring out from this story. It's a story many of us may be familiar with, but we start again from verse 1. We saw the husband of the widow had died. And then from that, we know that the husband must have probably been a good guy or a Christian. Verse 1 says, One day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elijah and cried out, Elisha, sorry, my husband who served you is dead. You know he feared the Lord. So the first thing I want us to note is the man was a good man, but he was broke. Right? was a good guy, but was broke. The guy must have been a good guy or a righteous guy. He was in the company of the prophet, but then he was broke. He wasn't just broke. He was in debt. And not just small debt. A debt that would make them come and carry your children. It's not what they assume. The NIV version of that scripture says, the wife of a man from the company of prophets cried out to Elijah, your servant, my husband, and you know that he revered the Lord. But then the creditor is coming to take away my two boys. So the truth is, the guy was in the midst, he was in the company of prophets, but he was broke and was in debt. We can even say that they were running a prophetic company, or an organization for the prophetic, and Elisha was the MD CEO of that company. He had other members in his team and were running an organization, but then one of the team members, in spite of being in that means, was in debt. So it's possible for you to be a Christian. It's possible for you to be in church. It's possible for you to have heard the prophetic word that you will blossom and that this month will flourish financially and still be broke. If care is not taken, it's very possible. But I pray for someone today that an end is coming to that in the name of Jesus. So let's know that. The second thing I want us to note is the widow was desperate for help, and she cried out. She understood the state that she was, and she knew that she needed help. The Bible says she ran out to Elisha and cried out for help. She knew she was at a lowest, and they now see that what seems to be a lowest was about to go a lot more lower, because she was, must have been struggling, probably while the husband was alive, maybe they struggled to heal, they borrowed money to pay school fees, they were just managing, and now he's even dead, and he was working somewhere with an expectation that, okay, resources, because now he's dead, it's not that he's, that he's dead alone, he was hoeing, and the people that he was hoeing, they are not ready to take things easy with her, so he was going down, so the lowest that she was before was about to go a lot lower than that. They were coming to take her children as slaves to pay off their father's debts. So she had lost her husband. She's also about to lose her two children. So she wasn't going to take that. And so she ran and she cried out for help. 
And I pray for someone as, as well that at this time, as you seek God for help, will you find help in the mighty name of Jesus? It's about the time you put a hard stop to the, whatever challenges you are facing as well. Because it keeps coming and you just think you can manage, you can cope. She got to a point, she realized, I can no longer deal with this thing because there was going to be a serious problem. And just like our pastor mentioned on Sunday, that the fact that that story ended in testimony is a testament that your life will turn around as well. And it will turn around for your good in the name of Jesus. This month we enjoy supernatural turn around in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be resurrection and resurgence for you. And all debts will be paid in the name of Jesus. So back to our story. She knew where she was. And she understood that was a problem. And except she gets help, that's going to be trouble. So let's assume maybe the guy was holding you maybe about 10 million naira or less about ten thousand dollars. You must have thought, how long will these boys work to repay this debt? So it means they will then become slaves. Will they be okay? Will they have food to eat? Will they go to school? Is that the end of their life? Will she ever see them again? And then they had potential to grow up as slaves and probably marry fellow slaves and start giving back to children that will be slaves. So a generation of a prophet suddenly becomes a generation of the slaves, except for the intervention of God. No one scripture says that I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seeds begging for bread. May you be remembered for good in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for someone that an end has come to the cycle of poverty in your life and in your lineage in the name of Jesus. Lack is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. God will turn your life around in the mighty name of Jesus. So when you get to a witty hand like the widow did, what do you do? We have to do what the widow did. She ran to God. She cried out for help. And she find help. So let's continue. So the prophet has, what can I do to help you? Elisha asked, tell me, what do you have in your house? And she replied, nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. So the third thing I want to I want us to notice what do you have? What do you have? Remember, we have said here over and over again that money is a means of exchange for value. And at every point in time, we have something. We may just think it's of no value or it doesn't matter or it's too small to solve our problem or to resolve our issues. But the truth is, at every point in time, we have something. What do you have? What do you have? The woman said she had nothing except a jar of oil. So most people that stopped at, I have nothing. But instructing, she didn't just stop that, I have, they said, I have nothing. Yes, we may feel we have nothing, but she remember, except a jar of oil that looks very irrelevant. But realistically, too, it was irrelevant. What would that small jar of oil do in all of our problems? Even if it's to fry egg, does she have egg at home to fry? So it was very useless, but at least she acknowledged that she had something. So I'm speaking to someone, no matter how tough or how low things may be for you, there is something. Because for all of us that attempt to move to the next level, we, what we need is always within or around us. We are never at a place that there is nothing at all that God can use. So if you are in a place of need, if you are in that desperate need like that, we do. What do you have? Do you have any talent? Do you have any gift? Do you have any property? Maybe the one your grandmother gave you, you may think is in the village. It doesn't do out anything. What do you have? Do you have a certificate? Did you go to school? Did you graduate? You may say, I don't have a job. I've been trying to look for a job. Yes, we know. Do you have a certificate? Do you have a story to tell? Do you have relationships, friends, old schoolmates, colleagues? We all have something. We may not just pay enough attention. There is no way that God will put us in a place where there will be nothing at all. Do you have any wisdom to share? Somehow God does not leave us empty. So God is using this story of this woman to also change our perspective that every man's solution is somehow within or around them. So the woman did not just say she had nothing. She recognized that she had the hoy. Because someone else that just stopped that I have nothing, hoping that probably the, prof the prophet does write her a check and go and sort yourselves. She will sort herself, but over time she will still be back in where she is. So God is reminding us that he will never allow any one of us to get to a point where there will be nothing to move us from where we are 
to the level that we are seeking in. And for us, having nothing or being at the lowest level is relative. To some people, it's absolutely nothing. But some other people, they are trying to enter into the next phase of their life. The better way that relates to you, that which you need to move on to the next level of your life is somewhere within or around you. We need to seek it, and as we seek it, we will find it in the name of Jesus. We may not have seen it or recognized it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. The fact that we are not seeing it or we are not recognizing it does not mean it's not there. Say to your neighbor, I have value. I have value. And I pray that God will uncover that your value in the name of Jesus. He will also uncover the value of what you have in Jesus' name. God, the widow had something, and then she was able to say that this thing has value. And God also placed a much value on that thing. God will uncover your value in the name of Jesus, and also uncover the value of what you have in the name of Jesus. The days of I have nothing is over for you in the mighty name of Jesus. We all have something, and this month, heaven will reveal it to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will stir our hearts in such a way that we we'll begin to see those things differently and it will change our perspective towards it to see the potential of that thing that seems so irrelevant to us in the mighty name of Jesus. So I ask again, what do you have? So the next thing I want us to note, which is number four, a jar of hoy. So there was a jar of hoy. So I had nothing but a jar of hoy. So my question again to you tonight is, what is your own jar of hoy because your jar of hoy could be your smile it could be your intelligence it could be your beauty to you it doesn't make heavy meaning but to others to god that places there it's of great value it could be your communication skills it could be your writing skills it could be the savings that you have it could be your car it could be your phone many people create a lot of contents today it could be your phone and you've seen so many content that you are wondering, how can this be a content? But it's a content. And people are making a lot. There is this guy, I've forgotten his name. He says nothing, he will just do. And before you know it, one million views. You are wondering. But then, so what is your own jar of oil? It could be your selling skills. It could be your marketing skills. Some of us can sell anything to anybody. I just, I just don't know. But then... We all have something. So what is your own job? It could be your teaching skills. It could be your litigation skills. You are not just supposed to use that to argue on WhatsApp groups alone and just show them. It could be useful in many other ways. It could be your negotiation skills. You know how to have your, you know how to talk. That could be your, it could be your critical thinking skills. You just find the way of seeing things differently. People may think you are too critical, but no, it's the gift of God. Just see things differently. So you don't have to feel bad about that. It's God's gift to you. That could be your job for it. could be your ability to solve problems. Some of us just, things that are so complex, so you just see that it's not a big, you just say what the truth is and there is solution. That could be your job for it. It could be your hair making skills. It could be anything. It could be your businesses. It could, always, it could also even be your failure in business. God never leaves off without anything. So there is always a jar of oil. What is your own jar of oil? There must be a jar in your house. Like you already mentioned, God never leaves us empty without anything. Many of us, just most of us, we underestimate what we have and we keep looking out for something else. We keep begging other people for their own jar of oil that they have discovered or they have decided to use. And we are feeling less of that for ourselves. We, are, we have our own beautiful, unique, but we just feel it's not worth anything. We are looking out for, some, for, for somebody's own to use. We are as your own is there, begging others for what you already have. So what is your jar of oil? Because a man's jar of oil is like a tool in his hand that God can use to transform his life, that God can use to move him from one level to the other. It might not take you to that big dream that you have, but to take you to the next ladder, to the next step on the ladder to that big dream. Like the story our pastor shared on Sunday, the bottles have always been in the house. But all of it, they just don't on hand. Okay, she could sell. The bottles could not start the business she wanted to start, but the money from the bottles could take her to her uncle. And that's just like the next step in the ladder. So we always have something. So in this season, God wants to deliver us from every form of limitation and self-limitation, so that we just feel we cannot be helped. 
We are God's children, and his blessings make us rich and has no sorrow. His blessings make room for us. He doesn't just want to bless some children and ignore all. If you are all his children, if you are all his covenant children, if you all belong to him, his love is shared abroad towards each and every one of us. So he's not going to leave anybody behind. So our responsibility is to find that jar of oil and just pour it. We'll get there shortly. So your jar of oil could be anything. Your jar of oil could be anything. I remember the story of one of our sisters in church. We had a cell leaders training or something, so they were grouped into different groups. So each group was supposed to take note and present. So in our group, I was one overseeing their group, so it just required for someone that could take notes for us. And then she volunteered to write the notes, do the report, and when we were done, I asked for it so I can submit to my boss, said she needed some few beginnings. And by the time she submitted the minutes and the report, it was so, Beautifully written. I was wondering, ah, is it more than this training that we just did there? And she, she took her time. It was very good. So we got talking, and then she been out of job, trusting God for a job and all of that. And this is what she can do. She's into social media marketing. She writes copy. She writes this. And coincidentally, around that time, I knew someone where they were trying to get a social media manager in their office. Okay, okay. I know, but let me just mention it to this. My guy probably, but by the time I called, he said I was late that they were interviewing people that day that I called that. She may send a CV, so she sent it. We would have already found who they wanted to take, but by the time they interacted with her, they liked her, they liked her CV, so they took her as well, and they gave her another brand to manage. She did the brand so well that they had to reassign her to something, but where am I? let's not lose our thoughts. She used what she had. She had a job, for it was a writing skill. It did matter then. She must have been writing for God knows when. But ultimately, she was trusting God. For, she had moved on from that job, and she had gotten many other jobs. But that was a very good stepping stone for her. So as simple as writing a very good report after a cell leader's training, change her story, and is still changing her story. She has transformed from where she was, no income, nobody, just open and open to, she's fairly comfortable now to the glory of God. So why am I saying this? There is somebody here today, that thing, well, it's just there, it's just there. God never leaves us without anything. We all have our jar of oil. Amen. So the next thing, after she told the prophet that she had nothing but a jar of oil, there was an instruction. So number five will be the instruction. The instru there was an instruction. The prophet told her to go borrow, borrow vessels and not to borrow a few, get vessels from friends, from neighbors, from friends, just get as many as you can. The other instruction she gave her was shut the door behind you. Not just borrow, she said shut the door behind you so you can shut out any form of distractions, voices. Voices that will silence the voice of God, that will silence the story, that will make you doubt what God wants to do and be thinking, will this be possible? So your borrowing of containers could also represent building capacity. Building capacity. Your small jar of oil cannot be enough to meet your needs. So that was why he told her to go and get vessels so that she can pour into them. So in, in getting that, it could be expanding your capacity, building capacity, developing yourself so that you can have room to take more. Borrowing containers also being expanding physically, mentally, another form of capacity development. It could mean learning new things. It could mean going back to school. It could mean sharpening your skills. It could mean building new relationships with people. It could mean going to places that you have not been before so that you can see things you have not seen before. That can, your eyes can open to possibilities around you. But for some things that we have never seen before, my think is not possible until you see that this thing has been existing for, for, for years before now. There would have been a time that you would think we cannot even have real-time video call, but today is, 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 is history. So you cannot imagine what could be in another 5, 10, 15, 20 years there about if, if, if price tarries. So in borrowing a vessel, is sharpening your skills, developing your capacity, sharpening that which you have. That will also imply your borrowing of container. There are competencies that we must develop, both intellectually and spiritually as well. So it means building capacity so that you can multiply your hoy and don't limit it. 
so that it can expand your mind to see possibilities. They also say, shut the door behind you so as to avoid distraction. What will people say? Will this work? Will it not work? What if it doesn't work? What will happen? The truth is, you can't be in fear, anxiety, and worry and assess God's covenant promises. It's not possible. You have to be in a state of peace, divine serenity, in a place of, of, of faith to assess God's covenant promise for you. So that was what it was doing. Shut the door behind you. So you can allow reasons for doubt, reasons for anxiety, reasons for fear, reasons for unbelief, reasons for uncertainty, because they would have come. Say, shut all the doors behind you, you and your children. So they can, because it would not make any sense, really. Ah, Madam, what are you doing? As they would say, it's mental health. She just lost her husband. She's not thinking straight. What's she trying to do? Because that's what have happened. And then she now realizes it's true. I might even they dream me. I might, you know, that's start thinking and you forget the whole thing. So that's part of the instruction. So because we need to obey God's inspired ideas, God's divine instruction, before that we can see and get results. I remember recently um, at our children's, my whole dad, daughter's school, so my wife went for the parents' teachers' forum and everything. So when they, they branded up, there have been interactions, questions and answers, and then they were around her. She was just inspired to say something, give a perspective in helping another person answer the question that was being asked about children, child adolescent, and all of that. And then she spoke for about two minutes thereabouts, and it was like revelation. Wow, wow, that's true, amazing. They were around her. So after that, People just crowded out, oh, Madam, thank you. You did this, 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 asking questions. Of course, she had books she wrote. She was able to sell a couple of her books, but she has not this. So the story now is, there's another parent that was there who has a child in another school, in a primary school. That's how she carried the news to her school. So when they were having their own next parent teachers as beating, she was then invited officially to come and address the parents. But here's where I'm going. By the time she finished that, they said they have a secondary school with over 1,500 parents that, please, we need to come and speak to our parents. See where it started from. Just a random instruction. Just to, she wasn't the speaker. She wasn't went to a meeting as a parent. But by the time they were rounding up, there are conversations, and then she made that contribution. And God is using that to open many other doors and also selling her books in line. So what am I trying to say? God always makes a way. Follow the instruction. Follow those godly, divinely inspired thoughts. You never can tell the door it wants to open for you. Tell your neighbor, obey God's inspired instruction. Ask again, what do you have? What is your job of calling? I pray we all find it in Jesus' name. So the next thing that happened is the pouring. So number six is pour. Number six is Paul. He told that to Paul the Hoy. Paul the Hoy. Paul here is an action word. You have to take action. You have to take action. We need to take action. She could have done every other thing, borrow the jars, borrow many containers, shut the door behind and be looking as, ah, will this thing work? I will like Paul Hoy. He will feed this and just be wondering and not do anything. There would not have been any results. There would not have been any miracle whatsoever. So, she took action. She took action. She took action. So the poor here is also an act of faith. Every other thing she could have done without the pouring, there wouldn't have been any result of anything whatsoever, let alone the multiplication. So there won't be vessels to be filled. There won't be any product to go and sell. Just like Peter, God, Jesus spoke to Peter that cast your net into the sea. He said, we've thought all night and caught nothing. But it didn't stay that we did not catch anything. But he said, nevertheless, at that word, I will cast my nets. And when they cast the nets, they caught so many fishes that they have never gotten before. The nets started breaking. He had to call for help. So he got what he wouldn't have got maybe in a month put together. So we have to take action. The little steps have to be taken for the results to come out. We need to take actions as much as possible. Many times we worry so much about what will happen? Will it not happen? Uh, what will people say? How will it happen? So instead of thinking, what if it doesn't happen? Why not think, what if it happens? 
So rather than thinking, what if it doesn't happen? Why not? What if it happens? The Duba now said that what if doesn't happen, then nothing would have happened. But she took action. Tell your neighbor, take action. Because the truth is, every time we act on divine instructions, like the widow did, we always get results. So when you act on divine instruction, you always, you should expect a result. Because it's God's instruction, there must be a result that will follow. So don't, don't, don't place God, don't limit God in your own way. Because there is a way our mind can box us and box God. Don't place God or limit God with your own limitations. Maybe with your own highest level of income that, ah, how will I be able to buy this house? Even if I save my 20 year salary, will I be able to? No. It's not for you to overthink many things at times. We have to, instead of limiting God with our thought, think through possibilities. We have to elevate and see through the eyes of God. Don't just see with your own eyes. You elevate and see through the eyes of God. Don't excuse yourself from things that you feel ah, is not for you or you don't deserve it, that it's not for people like you. Who says? Yes, you might feel that, but you have to elevate and try to see like God. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. I was listening to one of my pastors some time ago, and he says that the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If that is the case, if the heart is the Lord, then he must have a portion here on earth. God, the heart is the Lord. God must give him his own portion. And I, I, I agree, and I connect with that as well. So don't limit God with your own limitations or with your own limited abilities. No. Our pastor has encouraged us many times that when they are discussing big things, we should put our mouth as well. Yes, or could there be some things or some discussions that we want to collapse your faith? Hey, hey, hey. But then, you just, you put uh, that yes, it's doable, it's possible, it can be done. And the Bible says all things are possible to them that believe. So you just believe God's word and then you act on it. So, you have to act and take actions. You have to act and take action. Acting on simple instructions can change your life forever. Acting on simple instructions can change your life forever. You are just seeing B. There is still C, D, E, F, D, A. There is still a law. So don't get, get locked up on A. That how do I, there is still a long way. And I pray God is opening new doors for all of us in this season. In Jesus' mighty name. So number seven, quickly. Sell the oil and live on the rest. Sell the oil and live on the rest. We have to make people see value in what we have and also why they need to buy it. You know, our pastor spoke, or spoke about this on Sunday and that selling becomes easier when it is targeted towards people that need it rather than people that don't feel the need for it at all. So living on the rest as well is as God has opened the way, we are to learn the basic principles of making, managing, and multiplying money. Principles like starting a business or offering more value to people or using our skills or investing in a business or investing in other venues that can help us to multiply our money so that we will not go back to square one. So he said, sell the oil, sell your skills, provide the value that you have discovered pay your debts, and also live on the rest. So, you will need to understand how to manage money and also how to manage human beings, how to manage yourself, how to manage the resources that God will bring to you. Because things don't multiply when attention is not paid into details for proper management. Increase don't go to places where there is wastage. It only goes to places where resources are properly managed. Even in John chapter 6, after Jesus had fed over 5,000 people, he asked them, gather the fragments. He's just passing a message to us that the fact that it was a miracle does not mean we should be wasting it anyhow. So it was just a divine instruction to us as believers. Yeah, but there will be times we enjoy many miracles. We are God's children. We enjoy favor. But it showed us that the fact that it was a miracle, everybody has eaten, they were full. He says they gathered the rest. It will be useful for some other people. And they still gathered a low lot. So, we have to learn how to not only manage, but multiply. That's why I said sell the rest and sell the oil and live on the rest. So, lastly, I want to add two more things before we pray. 
which is not directly part of the story, but you can also relate it to it. The eight and nine together, the eight will be the force of God's favor. The force of God's favor, and number nine will be we are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. Psalm 44 verse 3 says, For they do not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own harm save them. But it was your right hand, your harm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. That's Psalm 44 verse 3 from the New King James Version. The last line says that it was your hand, your right hand, the light of your countenance, because you favored them. As Christians, as believers, we have to be very conscious of God's favor at every point in time. Life is beyond intelligent quotient, is beyond works, is beyond self-determination, is beyond all of those things are very important because favor has to rest or work on something. But favor is also very needed for outstanding success beyond skill and money. There are some things or there are some doors, money or skill may not be able to open for you that God's favor will open for you. And there are some things you can get without money that favor will bring to you. So as believers, like I was saying, what are you expecting? You have to be very conscious of God's favor anywhere you find yourself, anywhere in the world. That the favor of God is upon you, the beauty of the Lord is upon you to establish the work of you. And you have to deliberately remind and decree over yourself that the favor of God is working for you and is speaking for you at every point in time. So you are not just to focus on your intelligence or your beauty or your connection or your certificates alone. Many other people have the same or maybe even better. So that which will distinguish you against all or with all of that is the favor of God. The favor of God is beautiful. The favor of God is sweet. So you have to learn how to continually attract God's favor, that God will continually allow the flow of favor to come towards you. So we are not saying don't work. We are not saying don't do anything. Whatever you are doing, what I'm saying, do it with the consciousness and from a standpoint of that you are favored by God. That the favor of God with this, so you have to be very conscious and look out for it. It was favor to that, at least made that to meet the prophet when she met the prophet. It was favor that ensured that she had containers to borrow and she was able to get so many. And I'm sure by favor she would have sold in a very, very good way, with very good amounts. So I remember the story of one of my senior friends some time ago. He was trying to organize an event. So, and then there was a desired kind of decoration that he wanted, but then he could not afford it. So I was supposed to use a hall, one of the halls at the Muson Center. So there was another program that happened the previous day. So they went in the evening to go and show okay, they've done and they are going to clean and everything. And so she met the person that decorated the hall and just spoke randomly that and we are doing this tomorrow that what and what can be done or if they have to keep it, how much we leave And I said, okay, they are doing a program, that is fine, that they can leave it. That they will come and tear down the following day. So they don't only leave the beautiful decoration, they still enhance for him at no cost. And that's what the favor of God can do. There was a desire, so some things money will not buy. So you have to be very conscious of God's favor at every point in time. So it's not just, I'm not saying just sit down and look, whatever you are doing, you must be done from the standpoint of the favor of God is upon you. At least this, my older friend, he went out to plan and prepare for the program. He showed up to ensure the venue was ready, but then he got more than he was expecting. Favor with man is as a result of favor with God. And God will favor you in this season in the name of Jesus. But I said, the art of the kings are in God's hands, and he turns them wherever he wants. God will cause men to favor you in the mighty name of Jesus. The husband and wife at the wedding in Canaan, in John chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10, they just enjoyed pure favor. They enjoyed pure favor. They were at the wedding. They ran out of wine. I'm sure the husband or the bride didn't even know what was going on. How Jesus' mother was rooting for them to ensure that there was provision for wine and all of that. So maybe when the chairman even saw the wine, I was asking, how come you left the best for the last? That may have thought, maybe my friends brought it to, or I don't, I don't know. Maybe they bought it. But then it was just mere favor. God, Christ was there then. Jesus well, that was there and they got to know. She may have not have known that there was something going on. So as much as possible, always be conscious of God's favor. 
in the name of Jesus, as we go in the second half of the year, we will enjoy favor like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. So my encouragement to be conscious of and always expect it. Always expect it. Be, be aware. You don't, like, for example, if you just got maybe a particular clothes or a car, maybe you got a red Camry, you now realize it's as everybody in Lagos is driving red Camry because somewhere is in your consciousness now. Let favor be like that for you. Let it be both in your conscious and in your subconscious. Anywhere you turn, you are seeing and you are finding favor in the name of Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 from the New Living Translation says that I have observed something under the sun. The fastest runner does not always win the race. Ecclesiastes 9 11, New Living Translation. I have observed something under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. And the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. Can you see that? It is all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. So the strongest or the smartest or the most intelligent will not always win. It is time and chance that happen to them. And the good news is that our God, our Father, is the one in charge of time and chance. And if we earthly fathers know how to do good things to our children, they will not ask for bread and will give them stone. How much more our Heavenly Father, who is in charge of time, is in charge of chance, and he will cause it to continually work in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. He is also the one that helps us to be at the right place at the right time, making everything to work out for our good. I pray you always be at the right place at the right time with the right people having the right conversations in the mighty name of Jesus. So the last part, like I said, always remember that we are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. As God is blessing us, as God is opening doors for us, as we are finding our job for it, as understanding what to do with it, remember we need to have a kingdom mindset towards all of these things as well. We should understand that our resources is to serve God and also to serve people. Just like our pastor said on Sunday, you can't have more than enough and your neighbor goes hungry. You are not just saying, Lord, bless this food, give to those who are in need. You say, carry the food and go and give them. I pray for someone today that your enterprise will not die. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your dreams will not die in your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. What God wants to do in your life, in your family, in your organization, it will find full expression in the mighty name of Jesus. So just open your mind. The Lord has prepared and has made the way. It's not just about you. It's also about God. God wants to prove himself through your life. God wants to show himself strong and mighty through your life. So I'm not, it's not just about you. It's also about God. God's name, God's image, God's power is also at stake. So when you are living your life, you are conscious of that as well. God will back you with everything. Why not just adjust and just plug yourself into the flow of what God is doing? that you are at the right place at the right time doing the right thing so just open up your mind and god will make a way for you in jesus name i pray this season your faith will grow in the mighty name of jesus even you will not be a stumbling block or an interest to what god wants to do in your life in jesus name god will do a new thing in your life he will make room for you and will make a way for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Just go ahead and lift your hands to every this one. I just thank God for tonight. Give him praise, give him glory, thank him for the plans he has for you, for the doors he's opening for you, for he has not left you without having anything, for your job hoy, for what he has left for you. You may not know, you may not, but I'm assuring you tonight by the grace of God that there is something that is there. No matter how low that you are, that thing that you need to move to your next level is right there with you, is available for you. Just thank God for it. Thank God, the giver of good gift, the giver of all gift, we thank you tonight. The giver of opportunities, go ahead and thank him tonight. The glory and the lift of our heads, we thank you. The giver of wealth, we thank you. The giver of life, we thank you. The God of all flesh, we thank you. The I am that I am, the one that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we can ever ask or think or imagine, we thank you. Covenant keeping God, we thank you. You are the one that keeps covenant, we thank you. 
We thank you. You are the one that opens heavens over our lives. You are the one that takes away limitations. Lord, we thank us God and celebrate God tonight in the name of God. With joy in your heart, with expectation in your heart, just thank him for the new thing he said to do in your life and in your heart in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and declare that this season I will flourish in the name of God. Go ahead and declare tonight that this season I will flourish in the name of Jesus. This season I will blossom. In the name of Jesus, this is now we flourish, I will blossom, and like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I bring forth my fruit in season. In the name of Jesus, whatever I lay my hands on to do will prosper. I flourish financially, I will excel, I will succeed. In the name of Jesus, I will use my resources to serve God. I will also be a blessing to people. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not worship money, but I will worship God. Money will not have dominion over me because God is bringing a lot of it our ways in this season, prophetically and by His divine divine order of grace. He's bringing a lot of it your way as you come. Decree that money will not have control over me in the name of Jesus. Money will not have dominion over me in the name of Jesus. I will worship God and God alone. I'll use my resources to do good. I'll use my resources to preach the gospel in the name of Jesus. In this season as I compare people to come in, I will use my resources as God is blessing me to bring in people to be a blessing in church and even outside of the church in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you as I blessing me i'm allowing this you to support your work here on earth and always be a blessing as well in the name of jesus i'll use my resources to do good in the name of jesus go ahead and receive grace tonight say lord i see grace to build new competencies i see grace to build new competencies in the name of jesus i see grace to multiply my wealth i see grace to build new competencies in the name of jesus holy spirit i yield my heart to you help me in the name of jesus i see grace to build new capacity i see grace to build new competencies in the name of Jesus. Fill my heart afresh with your wisdom. Fill my heart with the right knowledge in the name of Jesus. Fill my heart with your understanding. Fill my heart with divine understanding in the name of Jesus. Set me on a higher pedestal for increase and for multiplication. Go ahead and ask God for help tonight. I receive capacity, oh God, for competency, capacity for new opportunities, capacity for new horizons in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I yield my heart unto you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace tonight. Set me on a higher pedestal for increase and for multiplication. I choose to enlarge, not limiting you, not limiting myself. Enlarge my heart. Enlarge my mind. I receive capacity for big dreams, for new visions, for, for possibilities. In the name of Jesus, enlarge my heart, oh God. I choose to step into a new level in wealth creation. I choose to step into a new level in value creation. In the name of Jesus, I choose to step into a new level in creative problem solving in the name of Jesus. I just set to a new level in providing solutions for people in the name of Jesus. I will not remain small. My business will not remain small. My church will not remain small. My groups will not remain small. My company, my office will not remain small in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive capacity in the name of Jesus. I receive capacity for newness, for new things in the name of Jesus, for creative problem solving in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive capacity in the name name of Jesus, La Roche Shataya, Mekanda Brosoto Libra Haya. Lord, we see capacity in the name of Jesus. You might be an employee that we learned on Sunday. Even at that level, you can add value. As a manager, you can add value. As a leader, you can add value. In the name of Lord, I see capacity to do big things, to dream big, to dare big things. In the name of Jesus, I will not limit you with my own limitation. I will not limit you with my own resources. I will not limit you with what I have in my hands. Lord, I see capacity in the name of Jesus. Lord, I see capacity for wealth creation for problem solving in the name of Jesus to provide solutions. I see capacity. I will not remain small in the name of Jesus. Lord, take the limits of my mind. Take the limits of my mind. No limits. No boundaries. No more limitations for me. Take the limits of oh God in the name of Jesus. Give me grace to handle big, big issues. Give me grace to resolve complex problems. Give me grace to handle bigger deals in the name of Jesus. Give me grace to resolve complex problems. Lord, grant me grace to be a 
problem solver, to be a creative problem solver in the name of Jesus and grant me unusual grace in the name of Jesus to resolve complex problems in the name of Jesus. Let me to see possibilities where others see the possibilities. Open my eyes, grant you grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. In the name of God, and ask for restoration tonight. Restoration of lost opportunities. Restoration of lost money. Restoration of lost businesses. God, and ask for total restoration. In the name of Jesus. Restoration of the opportunity that you have missed. In the name of Jesus. Every opportunity that you have missed, God is bringing restoration to you. In the name of Jesus. Opportunities to have increased your wealth, God is bringing that restoration. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will restore all for you. Anything you may have lost, ask for total restoration. In the name of Jesus. We have lost money or lost an investment or lost a property. Ask the Lord for restoration. Total restoration in the name of Jesus. Total restoration. Some may be feeling neglected or you are feeling stagnated. I pray that the Lord will restore you. That God will open new doors for you in the name of Jesus. You may feel neglected, feel stagnated. Ask for new doors. God will open new doors for you in the name of Jesus. For the Lord is doing a new thing in your life. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is doing a new thing in your life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be the name of God. Lastly, ask God for strength in your inner mind. That you will not be stranded. You will not be limited anymore. That you break the hold of every negative thought. You break the hold of every limiting belief in the name of Jesus. Declare that any kind of siege holding you down is broken tonight. But that this now is broken and we have escaped. Declare that every form of limiting belief that has been broken tonight in the name of Jesus. I do not have the spirit of fear. I have the spirit of love. I have the spirit of power. I have the spirit of a sound mind. I have peace and I constantly produce outstanding results in every area of my life. I have peace on every side. I have love. I constantly produce outstanding results in every area of my life. I break every form of seed over my life in the name of Jesus. I receive God said in my human mind I will never be stranded. I break the hold of negative thoughts in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Just like that, thank God tonight. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name, O oh God. Lord, we decree in the name of Jesus that we are blessed in Jesus' name. I decree we are empowered to prosper in the name of Jesus. This season we will all blossom in Jesus' name. This season we will prosper in the name of Jesus. We will see the hand of God like never before. In the name of Jesus. You will no longer be limited in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God will show forth for you in amazing ways. The power of God will show forth for you in unusual ways. The favor of God will distinguish you in the name of Jesus. The favor of God will open new doors for you in the name of Jesus. You will no longer be limited in the name of Jesus. The power of God will distinguish among your friends and equal in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will confirm his word over your life. The world will perfect his word over your life. You will indeed blossom in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm his voice over your life. In this city you will flourish. In this city you will blossom. In this world we are all flourishing financially in the mighty name of Jesus. God will prove himself strong and mighty in our lives in the name of Jesus. The Lord show for for that widow in second king. He will show up for you. He will show up for your children. You show for all that concerns you. You will never be stranded. You will never have a better yesterday. You will never have a better last year. I decree according to God's word over us in this church. Every day, in every way, it keeps getting better and better. In the name of Jesus, it keeps getting clearer and clearer. Doors have been opened for you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank Heavenly Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. Just like that. Thank God tonight, Lord. We thank you. Blessed be the name of God. We give you praise. To give you glory in Jesus mighty name we are praying quickly before I go tonight while all eyes are closed and all eyes are bound I just like to quickly pray for someone here tonight I don't want to take this moment for right whether you are in this hall or you are watching us online or you are watching this after now if you don't have a relationship with Jesus that's where you start from like I said anybody can have skills anybody can make money anybody can be anything but then the favor of God in a man's life cannot be compared to anything. The peace of God in a man's life cannot be compared to anything. The love of God in a man's life cannot be compared to anything. So if you are here, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. That's the starting point. Don't take this moment for granted. If Jesus should come today, 
whether for you or for all of us i don't know where you will spend your eternity you are not sure you are saved we are not sure you will spend your time with him in heaven this is a day to have a rethink it's not anything the truth is all of us came into this world as sinners none of us came here as a perfect person but different than when we had the good and we yield our hearts to him god made a difference so if you are here under the sound of my voice or you are joining us online i want to invite you to start this relationship god can turn your life around and he wants to transform you with what you have in this season but it starts with this decision so you want to give your life to god can you please just raise your hand to heaven while all eyes are bowed while all eyes are bowed all eyes are closed whether you're online as well put your hand on your chest or raise it to heaven and just invite jesus to your life say after me lord jesus i come to you today I ask that you forgive me all my sins and you cleanse me from every form of unrighteousness. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior and I yield my heart to you. Help me to live for you. Fill my heart with your love. Heal me and save me. I declare right now that I'm a child of God and my life is completely dedicated to you from now on in jesus name i pray for that so shall it be in the name of jesus as i align with christ this evening i pray that nothing will snatch you from his presence all the days of your life you will live for him and you live to glorify him in the name of jesus we thank heavenly father for we pray in jesus mighty name day star raising room what